became interested in testing saliva when I was doing research on breast cancer. I knew that um, certain hormones were affecting the growth rate of breast cancer, in particular estradiol and progesterone. We needed to find ways to be able to monitor the levels of hormones in the breast cancer patients or people who were at risk for developing breast cancer. So we wanted to be able to look at the levels of estrogen and progesterone and there wasn't really a simple way to be able to monitor the, the average population for hormone levels. So we wanted to take a look at, and that's why I submitted a grant and was funded half a million dollars to look at the levels of hormones in, uh, in women, in particular those who are at high risk for developing breast cancer. Some of the advantages of saliva testing are that it's, it's non-invasive. It's easy for the, the patient to collect it. Um, if you were doing a, if, you, if a patient comes and said, I'm really stressed out a lot, and you want to be able to look at their stress hormone cortisol, um, you need to look at it four times during the day. So if you, you need to collect a morning, a noon, an evening, and a night. Most people are not going to want to stay at the hospital, you know, for, for 12 hours to collect their cortisol. And just being there is going to be stressful anyway. So they can, they can take a kit home with them and they can collect under the conditions that, that they choose, hopefully a, a less stressful situation. So we can get a good idea of you know, where their hormones are at. There are differences in, in ranges in saliva and in serum. Um, what ZRT has done is looked at the, at the range of, of the levels of hormones in, in different people and we've tightened it up a little bit. A, a, lot, of, a lot of the labs use the, the, the 95, 5 to 95 percentile. So you only have maybe 5 percent of the population that's outside that range uh, is considered abnormal. And the problem with that, that's not really normal. That's not really what you find in an average population. So we tighten that range. If you consider a bell curve, we, we tighten that range to 20 to 80 percentile instead of the you know, 97.5 to you know, um, 2.5 percent uh, range. So that, that actually um, helps in terms, of, in terms of defining somebody as either having a deficiency or an excess. I think what makes ZRT the leader in saliva testing is, is you know, there's a lot of research behind what we do. Um, I'm a researcher. I was involved in the development of all these tests. Um, we have a lot of other people here that are uh, very deeply involved in understanding what the hormone tests mean, understanding, you know, how they're done, understanding how they're developed understanding when there is a problem, how to solve it. Because I, I you know, there are other groups that, that might have, other laboratories that might not have the, the staff to really deeply understand um, what it is that's going wrong if, if there a problem exists. We, we have the staff, you know, to be able to understand in depth what's happening if anything is going wrong. And, and also to, to understand what, what new tests need to be developed. What is it that we need to do to make it better? We're constantly improving on what we're doing. And we do that by listening to our providers. We listen to the people that say, oh, I'd like to see this or I'd like to see that. So we can do that development work. We can add these things on. We can do different things because we're, we, we have that research component. Of the, of the laboratory that allows us to go forward in being uh, creative and develop new things.